Welcome. My name is Ray Klein. I'm a certified master inspector and, and instructor here at InterNACHI in Boulder, Colorado. Today I'm going to show you how to take a sample of well water for a coliform bacteria test. So the first thing I'm going to do is wear some nitrile gloves. You can also wash your hands very well for this because what we want to do is we want to protect ourselves from any contamination that we might get on the faucet and could skew the test. So I'll get my gloves on here. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I want to take this diffuser off of the faucet and set that aside because that could have contaminants on itself. I'm going to run some water, cold water only, and I'm going to let this run for about 60 seconds or so just to flush out any potential contaminants that might be inside the faucet. So we're just going to let that run for a minute. Okay. My next thing I'm going to do here is I need to sanitize the tip of this faucet to make sure that we're not going to put anything into the water sample that could skew the test at the lab. So if this is a metal faucet, you can either flame it slightly around the edge and up inside, or if it's plastic, you may want to use some alcohol swabs, or you could perhaps use a spray bottle with some isopropyl alcohol in it and spray up inside and around the, the faucet tip. So I'm going to flame this just a little bit up inside and around the edge. I just want to make sure that I've cleaned all the contaminants off of there so we don't screw the test up. This is a sanitized bottle I got from the lab. You'll see it's got white powder on the inside. This is a preservative. We don't want to rinse that out. It's got a sealer around it on the top on the handle itself or on the lid. So we'll go ahead and remove our lid. It's typically most of these bottles have a mark on them right there at 100 mils. That's where we want to fill our bottle to. So we'll go ahead and turn on the water. We'll let that run in there. We're a little bit over, but that's all right. If it's a little overfilled, don't worry about it. So we get our lid back on here. Make sure it's good and sealed. And dry it off a little bit on the outside. Next step I need to make is there's usually a label with these bottles for the lab and you'll have to write some information down there like the address, the time, the date, and so forth. You'll also need to fill out your chain of custody form for the lab. Make sure that they have all the information they need. When you ship these bottles, you want to put this in a cooler with some ice in it to take the trip from the inspection site to the lab. You only have 24 hours to get this to the lab for the testing. Typically the kitchen sink is not always the most ideal place to take these samples. The kitchen sink can contain more contaminants than some of the other sites in the house. But it may be the only site that you have. You might be taking a sample at a cabin or a mountain home where there's no outside faucets and you only have just a kitchen sink to, to take the sample. So in that case, you wanna make sure that you do sanitize this very well. That's our quick inspection tip of the day. See you next time.